notes. And when I give you your test, uh, the test will be on, on these notes. You will not be tested on the other material that I gave you. But I gave that to you hoping that you will keep it and when you get a chance after Bible school is over, I hope you take these notes home, read them, think about them, pray about it. And uh, a lot of this material, you're getting so much material in a short time. There's no way you can remember all of these things. The important thing is to keep the material and then review that later. And that will become very helpful to you. So the test we will have will be on the notes I've given you today on ministerial ethics. This little booklet was written by a very wonderful man by the name of John Clement. John Clement was a, was a real friend of mine and he was a missionary. He was a missionary in South America and uh, the nation of Argentina. He was a missionary in Argentina. He was a very successful pastor in the United States. And then later, he was a missionary in England. And he did a lot of Bible school work. And uh, he is the man who wrote this little booklet on ministerial ethics. And the reason I think that's important is because he not only wrote about ministerial ethics, but he was probably one of the best examples of a man who really followed what he's writing about. Some people are very good at writing, but they don't practice what they're writing. But this man is a man who, first of all, was an example. And what he is writing here is what he did. So John Clement is now with the Lord Jesus Christ. His wife is still living, but he has passed on. And uh, we're going to go to his uh, text now. Chapter 1. If you've got that open in front of you, the seven divine principles. We're going to talk about seven basic principles to having good ministerial ethics. Now, when we use this word ministerial ethics, I don't really like to call this class a class on ministerial ethics because, in my opinion, it's Christian ethics. Everything we're going to talk about here, except the latter part that refers to ministers alone, most of this is talking about the kind of ethics or good behavior we as Christians should have with one another. But ministers should be an example. They're at the high level. They should be an example to others of the way we should have good relationships with one another. So the first principle that we have here is the principle of submission. The principle of submission. Have you got that? The principle of submission, right here. That's what we're talking about now, the principle of submission. Brother Peter saying is was always good to help his wife who did not know English. And uh, I was telling him yesterday, Brother Sunil, that Peter Singh would always teach his wife the class afterwards because she couldn't understand the English, so he would help her to understand. And uh, I gave an exam to Brother Peter Singh and to his wife. <laughs> and she did better in the exam than Brother Peter Singh. <laughs> I hope when you see your wife, you will tell her that, that, that we appreciate the fact she did so well. <laughs> The principle of submission. Let's look now, let's open our Bibles. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. 
Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. Which, when you, if you use the English Bible, what translation do you use? Do you use NIV? NIV? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's very good because the e English is a little easier to understand. For those of you, King James Version is okay, but it's harder to understand. The NIV, of what language is your Bible? Is that English? Uh -huh. Okay. So we're going to read now Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And then Hebrews 13, 17. Let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So, the very first principle here is submitting yourself to one another. And that is not always easy to do. But that is an important part of having a good relationship with other people. Be submissive. Brother Peter saying, if you were to express what it means to be submissive, how would you express that? Stand up and tell us. Tell us what you understand that means. We have to follow our leaders with our whole heart, not grumbling, mm -hmm. with happiness. That is the yes, follow our leaders, yeah. be submissive to them. Yeah. Yes, yes. Obey whatever they say. Yeah. Even sometimes when maybe you feel the leader is not giving the best advice or leading in the best way, you still are submissive to them. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. That's probably, you can sit down, it's very good, brother, saying that's probably one of the things that is difficult. If you feel your leader maybe is making a mistake or not doing things quite right, sometimes it's difficult to be submissive. But as a Christian, we need to be submissive to people, even if we, we don't agree with some of the things they're doing and their method, their approach, out of respect for them. It comes to politics. Some, the, the Bible says that we should pray for the leaders of our nation. Does that mean that we agree with everything our leaders are doing politically? Not necessarily. We have a president in the United States, President Obama. If you would ask me, Brother Sism, do you agree with everything that Mr. Obama is doing in leading the United States? I would have to say no. I think he has made some big mistakes. But still, out of respect for his office, I want to show him respect and be submissive to him. Even if I do not agree, with everything a leader in the church is doing, still, out of respect, I should be submissive and have the right attitude towards that person. And when it comes to our brothers and sisters in Christ, even in a local church, you may see some things happening in your local church. Maybe the pastor of your local church is doing some things that you don't feel good about, you think he's not using wisdom in what he's doing. Still, out of respect, 
we should be submissive. <coughs> Praying that the time will come when a change can be made. We are submissive, but if we feel a new leader would be good, we just keep praying that God will, in his own time, help us to have better leadership. But be submissive to one another. Very important. And then we come to number two. The principle of discerning the Lord's body. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 29. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, if I would ask you a question this morning, what is the Lord's body? What would your answer be? If I would say to you, what is the Lord's body? Many Christians do not understand what this means. They think of the Lord's body as being their <coughs> congregation they're a part of your local church. Your local church is only a part of the Lord's body. The body of Christ is much greater than a local church. The body of Christ is even much greater than a church organization. For example, the Oneness Pentecostal Movement, the United Pentecostal Church as we know it, United Pentecostal Church is probably the largest oneness movement, but it's not the only oneness movement. There are many others also. And they're all apart. They're all a part of the body of Christ. And for us to set ourselves up as judges as to what is the body of Christ and what is not, we have to be very careful about this. That's where I feel we have to be very careful as Christians, not to be too condemning and too critical and too judgmental. The Bible tells us that the Lord knows those who are His. He knows who they are. And we have to be very careful to say, He is a part of the body and she is not a part of the body. That is not for us to decide. God decides. He knows the hearts of men. And he knows whose hearts are really towards him. You may belong to a church body, local, or, or an organization, and still your heart may not be where it should be. So let's not try to judge and say, this person is a part of God's body and that person is not a part of God's body. That's not for you and me to decide. We need to preach the truth of the gospel and he determines who's in his body. So the part of the body of Christ, discerning the body of Christ, is I'm sure much larger than we even imagine. Are you feeling okay back there? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You don't have fever, do you? No. No fever? Yeah. You seem to be very hot. Maybe that fan needs to go a little faster. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You're, you're sure you're okay? Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's be careful about setting ourselves up as judges as to who is in the body of Christ and who is not. Let's leave that to the Lord, but just understand that the body of Christ is much larger than many of us realize. We're finding out in some countries of the world that there are oneness Pentecostals we didn't even know about. Take the nation of China. In China, for example, there are people who have understood the oneness message 
We don't even know where they first heard. I've met pastors who told me, nobody told me about the oneness message. I understood it when I read the Bible. I have a friend in Gujarat. I have a friend in Gujarat who says that nobody ever showed me from Scripture the oneness of God, but it was while I was studying the Word of God that I knew this was the truth. And I had a friend in, in uh, UP, in Bareilly. He lived in Bareilly. We call it Bas Bareilly in UP. And Brother Masi Das, I said to him one day, who showed you the oneness of God? He said, oh, Brother, he called me Brother Harry. He said, oh, Brother Harry, when I was studying the Scripture, the Holy Spirit showed me the truth of the oneness of God. And that has happened in many cases to people. They never heard this from anybody else, but the Lord showed them this wonderful truth. Now, when God does that, Imagine how many people in the world there may be who understand this, but we don't even know about them. The, the strength of the oneness Pentecostal movement is something we don't even know. We have no idea how many there are in different nations of the world who already understand this beautiful truth, but they're not a part of our United Pentecostal Church or any other of the oneness groups we know about. So the body of Christ is a big body. And uh, I thank God for what He is doing in the hearts of people all over the world. It's a big family. I'm so glad I belong to the family of God. How big is God's family? It is much bigger than we will ever, ever know. There are so many people who have committed themselves to the Lord and are a part of His family. So deserting the body of Christ is what we're looking at here. Now let's go on to the next page, the principle of the servant. The principle of the servant. <clears throat> 